Hi, uh, I'm Karthik. And I'm yeah. Julia. Uh, we're from the New York Times. We are a part of the immersive team in the New York Times, and both of us are immersive experience designers and graphics editors. So we're, we're a fairly small team, and we collaborate with other desks in, in the newsroom and uh, do some of the reporting ourselves as well to bring immersive experiences as part of our um, general news coverage. So 2018 has been an incredible year for us. We started out our AR reporting early 2018 with Winter Olympics, and then we did a couple of feature pieces. And once we got comfortable with the whole production aspect, we got into breaking news. And uh, we did uh, two more breaking news pieces, and we, we did investigative reporting with Duma, and uh, then we got into volumetric video. And we did two uh, volumetric videos, and we finished off the year with CERN data visualization and CERN where you visualize the particle collision in 3D. Yeah, looking at the screen, that's a lot of pieces. <laughs> so we started experimenting with AR early on in 2017 with um, Tango, uh, Google's product, and we were thinking a lot about what we can do with the space. And when AR um, became more accessible on um, mobile devices, the things that people were mostly familiar with were um, either entertainment-based, like the dancing hot dog, or something more practical and consumer-based, like furniture that you could put around your living room, or just a whimsical game experience that you could take over your environment with. And our challenge was to figure out how we can take the kind of news coverage that we do, like, for example, the Parkland shooting, and use this new form of storytelling not only to convey information in a very precise, direct way that our readers could understand, but also cover it with the level of sensitivity that it deserves uh, without making it feel like a game. And from all the experience, there are some things we found that work really well for an AR story that we've been choosing. So we're not going to put just about anything into the immersive space. Not every story needs to be in that format. So we're looking for things that have a lot of value in terms of conveying from information from every perspective. So there's things, there's data sets, there's objects that really inform the readers a lot more about something when you can see it from every dimension. Explaining scale or height or speed or distance in your own environment in relation to your body is really, really beneficial for, for some subject matters. And AR is such a visceral experience. It tags at your emotions if you can experience something next to you. So we look for stories that could really benefit from that. It's really intuitive to interact with 3D objects in your own 3D space. So with your own body movement, um, there are certain forms of information that are just better to understand that way. And <laughs> I feel awkward saying that now, but we've been using this phrase, make graphics large again. Uh, so you are used to looking at some complex data sets and, and visuals on a tiny constrained screen and being able to examine these uh, objects in a large environment at your own pace in greater or lesser detail is really, really valuable. So uh, based on all the experiments that Julia was talking about, and uh, we essentially did a lot of, uh, we took earlier pieces and reimagined them in AR using Google Tango and uh, Unity-based experiences, and uh, we basically arrived at certain design decisions based on these experiments, in the sense that we we didn't want AR to be like, hey, click here to see AR experience, but it it was completely well intertwined with the reading experience. So it's uh, we thought of it as a complementary experience to reading. We AR was just like just another medium of storytelling. It could be. Uh, images, videos, and AR. It, it was all treated the same way. So with that in mind, we made a really early prototype in Unity to envision how that app should be. This, this is that prototype. Oh, music. Oh, we don't need music, it's fine. <laughs> so yeah, th this is really early. We, we actually imagine AR to be a window into the world of the reader where you can project objects and information into. This, we basically went to the Met and did photogrammetry using a phone. And uh, like you can see that the interactions are spatial, and it be, the AR basically complements the reading experience. All right, so. So we're going to do some live demos for you. Hopefully, they will work. 
not we'll resort to video of some of the projects that we've published so far. Okay. All right. So so let's let's start with uh, Winter Olympics. This is basically what we started our AR coverage with. And uh, as a graphics department, we do a lot of these stories where we choose like, top athletes and basically dissect what, what they do, uh, why they do what they do the best. So this is Nathan Chen, the figure skater. And he's right now in the middle of the quad. And we basically explain, as you walk around, you explain why he does that. He's like hanging in the air and this is the this is the path he actually follows when he does the quad, and uh, yeah, and you notice that the whole thing is spatial. The the interactions are spatial. So we used to do a lot of uh, this. Directly comes from two D graphics, where we used to do a lot of click here to open a lot of things, but uh, we thought that the simplest thing that you can do in AR is just tell the user that they're there and then just walk around it. So everything happens, uh, every, everything happens based on your walk. So that's when we arrived at strolling is the new scrolling. And uh, everything, is, everything happens as though it's like right there. What do we, what do we show next? Let's do the, the Thai caves. Oh, Thai caves. So after, after experimenting with sports and culture, we jumped into breaking news, which if you're familiar at all with the production pipeline for AR is very intense. This is a piece that we produced in three days compared to others that took six to eight weeks. Um, this, if you guys remember, uh, when the team of uh, young kids uh, got trapped in a cave and divers had to go through these very intricate tunnels to save them. Um, New York Times covered the story a lot in 2D graphics to explain in a more immediate way of what happened. But we felt like to truly convey the sense of claustrophobia that the team experienced while going through these really, really, really tight tunnels could only truly be felt if you are able to experience it in your space. So this is based on data that we found from a French survey that was conducted of the cave in the 80s. And these are basically some of the more notable and more difficult passages that the divers and the kids had to go through. And when you look at it in your space, you're truly able to understand the challenges in a way that 2D media was not able to convey, either through photos or through videos. I mean, you're, this is the smallest opening that these divers had to take these 12 you know, inexperienced children through. And when you're looking at it in relation to your own body, you truly understand the, the sense of difficulty that they experience. And this, this piece we really liked because this kind of prove that for AR to work, it doesn't have to be extremely complex. This is, and this is the only way this story could have been told to make the user feel the claustrophobia. And what, Ashley Graham next? Let's do the Ashley okay. Graham piece. So this, this is a piece that we worked with uh, plus size model Ashley Graham. It was basically on body confidence. We chose volumetric video because it kind of complemented her whole reasoning of you know, showing her the way she is without altering her form in any way. So this is for the New York, New York Fashion Week. And you could basically place her right next to you, Leah. And she does her walk in front of you. And we, we, we kind of, uh, this is, since this is the first volumetric video, and it was. Uh, uh, I mean, we had to consider a lot of new things in the sense that we didn't want people to go too close to them. So if, if it's done, she kind of fades away. So this basically is like giving personal space to the hologram. This is a brand new technical challenge in terms of putting a hologram in your space and just making that function on the technical level. But on a storytelling level, there were a lot of things we had to consider working with a real person respecting them in, in, in a way that you know, conveys the subject matter correctly. OK. Uh, what next? Duma. Yeah, this is, this is one of the most serious pieces that we did. This, is, this happened a few months back, uh, yes, yeah, six, seven months back, where uh, 
uh, a chemical bomb was dropped in uh, Duma, Syria, and uh, the government's claim was that it was planted there but we wor worked with forensic architecture who are incredible in reconstructing the whole scene of the chemical attack and where it was dropped. And we let you explore the evidence to prove that it was basically dropped from the air and not planted as they claim it. So th this, this was like, the images like these were used to reconstruct the 3D model. And as you walk around, you, you explore the evidence. So the front, uh, this talks about the dent, and this talks about the charring when uh, stuff happens. And uh, yeah, this is the, this is like the impression from that. And so it basically had to have fallen from that place. And because of the seriousness of the subject matter, as well as the level of information we wanted to show, we stripped the background. So in a way, it's a VR, AR experience where you explore it in a more abstracted environment. And Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you.